Welcome to Hello Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. A while ago, a young lady who is a popular blogger on Instagram, the founder of Break on Makeup, got into some serious trouble on Instagram with her videos being posted on several blogs, as well as several statements being made about her, all in celebration of her 30th birthday. Now, there was a post that originated, or that was the genesis of all this drama. Today on the show, we're joined by Okoro Blessing in Kiruka, the founder of Break Our Makeup. She will be sharing her own side of the story. Let's get to find out what really happened, what is true, what is not. And how has this affected her as a person? Thank you for joining us, Blessing. Thank you so much for having me. So first of all, happy belated birthday and happy 30th. And I hope that this new decade is a very, you know, positive one for you. However, this started on, a, on very interesting notes uh, for the blogs, but not very interesting for you. First of all, there was a photograph of you standing in front of an apartment saying that this was the house that we have. I think we do have photos of that, that, you know, you took stones that your ex husband threw at you and you built them into a house. What do you have to say about that house? Was there really a, is there really a house or did this house belong to Ezechenko? Onye Ezechenko, as we've come to know. Okay, to be very frank, I want to be very truthful here. There is a house, I'm actually building a house, but I actually took a photograph in Onye's house. That I would not deny. But that was not the intention. I actually took this photograph two months to my birthday. And what took me to that compound was the stone tiles it was into beauty. It was still an, it's an open site. So people were still constructing in the site. So I was passing that day with my kids. And I'm like, wow, this stone tiles is nice. So I stopped. I walked into the house. I saw a guy. The guy recognized me because my mom is quite popular. He was like, mwa lolo. I was like, okay, hi, what's up? I like this um, stone. He's like, ah, don't problem. He took me around the house. So the initial intention wasn't to snap that was not the intention. So while I went back, he was even the one ordering for the stones and for them to come and fix it. But I couldn't meet up um, what I wanted to put out there on my birthday. And I said, OK, fine, since I want to replicate this house, let me just like do a picture. <laughs> you know, I didn't know it was going to get out of hand and somebody would come and start, you know. So would you say that you did that out of some form of pressure? Oh, it wasn't pressure. It was. I didn't have anything at the back of my mind. Like, I didn't know it was going to go that viral. I didn't know he was going to take it that serious. Like I said, it was an open site. It wasn't as if I crawled into the house. So just like the way you are passing, you see a beauty and you like it, you take a picture. It's just a normal. And I wasn't like the only person. And this person that gave me access knows me and he knows where I'm building. Okay. Do you why, do you, why did you feel the need to post something you know, to show something on your birthday. Because some people argue that you really didn't have any explanation. You didn't owe anybody any explanation. So th that's where the, did you, did you do this out of pressure question came out from? Why did you feel the need to at least inform them? I know you said you had a, a, a target for yourself when you were turning 30, but I don't think you shared this target with the public. So why did you feel that pressure? Did you, did you really have to do that? No, I don't like I felt pressured. Normally, if, if, if people follow me on Instagram, I try to want to inspire the next person. Maybe I was overexcited. Maybe I didn't want to wait. I was excited with the stuff in my head. And number two, I was also influencing for a housing brand. So I felt, okay, if I put out this, and you know on your birthday, when you put out stuff, it goes viral. And I celebrated my 30th birthday, and it was a bit loud. So I needed something that was going to go viral, to be very honest. I didn't know it was going to be this. But it was some form of publicity. So some form of publicity. That was just. Do it. you regret it? I don't. I don't at the end of the day because um, what really transpired wasn't even about the house. It was a different, like I said, I took this um, picture like two months to my birthday and I did not jump into the house. I did not invade the house. So while this whole thing was going up online, so I had to call my mom. Initially, when Instablog tapped into my conversation while I was talking to my sister, initially, it was just a joke. I was just having fun because my followers were growing. But when they tapped into my conversation, I was like, this is getting serious. So that conversation that went viral as well was one between you and your sister? And my younger sister, yes. I was telling her, she was telling me, what kind of house is this guy even build that we're not going to hear? But I was like, I will replicate the house. So that was the conversation that went on Instablog. So when I saw the comment, I was like, mommy, I called my mom. I said, it has gotten out of hand. She said, okay, she knows this Onyeze. The younger sister is my mom's sister now. She stays downstairs. Let she get the phone number since it's getting, because they're making, they were making it look as if I stole his house or I'm trying to sell his house. They, they weren't painting it as I took a picture. They were making it look as if I am impersonating. I want to claim his house because the guy is not a very learned person. He didn't see it from that perspective. So I and my mom went to see him that morning. 
He said, okay, no problem. There is people online that are, he, he doesn't, he's not even online. So he started showing us the chat people were sending him, making it look as if, there was a time I posted the plan of my house. He also posted the plan of his house. So they told him that he should post the plan of his house, that Blessing wants to steal his house. And as a blogger, it would be easy for me to sell the house online. Do you know what was triggering the whole stuff? When we saw him that morning, he said, no problem. He now told me, Blessing, go back to the house and do something nice. Hail me. So Omafa. Do you understand my point? That was what took me back to the house that morning. So this is the morning where you were wearing the Ankara red yes. dress? Yes. Uh -huh. okay, no, I wasn't wearing the Ankara then. I was wearing a jean, a spaghetti, and a hair bonnet. People said I was waking up from sleep. No, it was because I fixed the gel up, so the hair was touching my back. So I wore the hair bonnet to cover my hair. So that was the morning. It was from his house. I drove straight. I dropped my... My mom doesn't stay far from him. Automatically, we are neighbors. His neighbors to my mom where he's living, and, my, and his neighbor, his house, this almighty mansion is like two minutes drive from where I live. I stay in a five bedroom, just very close to the house. So as I was coming back, I just drove there. The guy that gave me access, he had already told the guy to give me access. So how did I go into the building again that morning? Okay, so um, blessing in all of this, we also know that there was a video that went viral, video of you in handcuffs and begging. What was, about, what was that about? Okay, that was the morning he asked me to go to the house and do something nice. So I went to the house, did a video, because he wanted me to hail or tell the world that he owns the house. I think he was beginning to enjoy the popularity. So I went there, the guy was there, and the guy even did the video together. This is only at Chinko's house. When I was done, I went back to my house. After like um, two hours later, the guy called me and told me that only is at the side that he wants to see me. He wanted us to do a video together. Because we had seen that morning previously, I didn't have anything at the back of my mind. I was just coming out from the bathroom. So I just wore that dress, locked my kids in the house. I'm coming. Let me just go a stone through. Then went to the house. All right, hold that thought. We do have that video. Let's take a look at the video and get to see exactly what happened. It was a video of Blessing in the red Ankara dress. And um, reportedly, or as we saw in the video, in handcuffs and crying. Let's get to understand what happened on that day. Raise your face up. Very big please. Let me call you back later. We are busy. You say that this house does not belong to you. Don't no, forget the number of the people. This video now we are talking now. Nobody will post it. Just in case. case. That's it. Back, this house no, does not belong to, belong to me. Who does this house belong Onyezi. to? Onyeze. who? Yes. Onyeze China. Onyeze China. Onyeze China. Onyeze China. What did you do that made them to ask you to say the owner of the house? I recently came here to take a picture. You recently came here to take a picture? Yes, sir. A picture of Onyeze, Abi? A picture of Onyeze? A picture of Onyeze's house? Yes. And you say that Onyeze is a rubbish human being, right? I've never said that. And that is a video of Okoro Blessing in Kiruka, in Kiruka, the founder CEO of Break On Makeup, who was recently blasted by several blogs because of a particular building um, allegedly owned by Onye Zinachinko. Now, this is the building that is in contention. Blessing had put up this building on her birthday, her 30th birthday, stating that she built this house from the stones that her ex threw at her. And now she's telling us her side of the story. Blessing, what exactly happened in that video? Maybe I should start by asking, when you saw that video, this, this video was everywhere. How did it make you feel? I felt bad, but I didn't feel terrible because I knew what exactly transpired. So what exactly transpired? Immediately I got, they called me that morning and I left. I went into the house, which the gate was open. So I just sat down there and I asked them, where is the Onyezin now? Because I left my kids alone in the house. They said, he's coming. Before I could blink my eye, three guys came with belts. The other one came with a handcuff, the other one came with a gun. Initially, I was still laughing because I didn't know where it was coming from. So the next thing they asked me to sit on the ground, that the Inspector General of Police said they should bring me to, um, what they call it, to the state CID or to SAS. I'm like, okay, fine, I know where I work, so can I speak to the IG? They said I should get my phone, that if I should talk, they're going to break my head. And at that point, I was in a very big house. They had closed the gates. They were still constructing a swimming pool at the back, in front of almost seven guys. So at that point, I couldn't do anything. I could be raped, I could be beaten, anything would have happened at that point if I had, you know, struggled. I sat on the ground. Because when they said the police said they should bring me, I felt probably he called the police. I said, okay, let's go to the police station. So they brought out their phones and started videoing. I was now, please, the begging there was, I was, stop videoing me, please. You know, instead of videoing, if I refuse to talk, the guy will raise up the belt that he's going to hit me, the guy will bring up the gun. 
that was what transpired in the video. After they were done, they were telling me they won't post it. I was begging. Now, please, because of where I work, don't post this video. Where do you work? I work with the Nigerian Police Force Pension. So how has all of this affected your work? It really did, but it didn't affect so much because the police actually investigated and understood that it wasn't really what transpired between, between um, I and Onyeze. So they got Onyeze arrested. They got the guy who handcuffed me arrested. They all got arrested. So the law took its course, but at the long run, they started begging. Because what got the police arrested was the police officer that appeared on that video. Everybody was curious. A lot of people know I work with the police. They're not like, OK, what happened? Some of my friends actually thought I involved myself in crime. That was the way this, because they made it look as if the police came and arrested me, detained me for jumping into a news house. But that wasn't what happened. So when they investigated it, those police officers that were there were lied to. Onyeze just drove to the road, picked, told them that um, Ambrobas invaded his house and was shooting, that he needs help. And if you look at, they were wearing a red face cap. They are the CTU units, counter-terrorist units that he brought. So he just brought them to intimidate me. Even when the police officers came, they were lost. They didn't even know. They didn't play so much part. It was when they arrested me, I realized that those people that even handcuffed me were just touts, bloody touts. Listen, None of them were. You're a mother of two children. Do you worry that this will come back to bite you in the future? No, I don't, because that, nothing transpired. It wasn't as serious as it was on the internet. It's a different case that I did something, because some people were saying, what if in future somebody digs up this um, stuff, you're on handcuff? And I'll ask the person, where did they take me to? Somebody put a handcuff on you, OK? Where did they arrest you? Which police station? So it wasn't really as serious as it was on the internet. They just make it. Do you regret all of this? Do you wish you could do anything differently? Um, yes, I regret not being patient. I think I was just being faster than my shadow. And number two, um, what just taught me, I never knew how big I was. Because it wasn't just that I took a picture. It was the person that took the picture. That was what made it go viral. So I was even feeling, OK, if it was a normal person that did this, it would have just died. And I was so shocked the way it's. So people had, I, I, I understood that people had some high expectations of me. So it made me go back to my drawing board and tell myself, OK, it's time to like cut off some certain things, add some certain things, and just keep some certain things private so that I don't have to push myself. So there was also a video of you, Onyeze, and another man. And you all said you had made peace. And that made people think, OK, maybe this was all some sort of publicity stunt. It so was after the police got involved and they begged and begged and begged. You know, just to make, I was insisting that they do a public apology. That was what I was insisting before I take off the key. But at some point, my mom was saying it doesn't change anything. Even if I do a public apology, people will still say I went to persuade him. You know the way the public think now? Or she has gone to see one man. You know, they just have a way of, my mom said I should let it go. So we're just doing that because some people thought I was in enmity with Enizi. Okay. Because for every time they, the trolls come to Trump, they'll be like, when is this coming around? No, you know? So that video was to tell them that. They were, and the person that was talking in the video, the spokesman, was the guy who actually handcuffed me and did the whole video. All right. So he was just trying to make, you know, things right. Now, um, in all of this blessing, do you, like, if you had the opportunity to say something to your followers, to social media, what would you say? I would say I'm sorry. I'm sorry for lying. I think that's what I did wrong. I told a lie. I'm sorry for running faster than my shadow, for not being patient to have my own, you know, being anxious to want to put out dream and, but at the end of the day, I'm sorry for what I did wrong and actually learned my lesson. At least I got punishment for that. Some I'm people sorry. also allege, you know, they blamed all of this on some sort of depression or mental issue. They said you had probably been dealing with depression, you know, or some mental issue that we don't know about. Is that true? No, a lot of people don't know what actually transpired. They just saw a video and a reaction and they concluded. People that know the true story, nothing, it wasn't that serious. That was just it. It wasn't as serious as it was being painted. So what have you learned from all of this? Patience is a virtue. <laughs> and number two, no need to run faster than your shadow. You're not running anywhere. You're not competing with anybody. Because at the end of the day, people read a different meaning from what I was trying to paint. But every time I put out something, I want to inspire somebody. And when this whole thing went viral, I told myself, at the end of the day, it's about even trying to inspire the people that came to you know, it's, they saw it like bragging. Beyond this one, people are, have also accused you of lying in previous times. They said you lied about owning a Brabus, and you lied about several other things. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that? Or what is this real story? There's no real story. I actually got that card, but I don't want to come and keep making it loud because of where I work. You know, the more you keep saying this and, you know, trying to prove a point, they start to probe into your office, start to ask you, where did you get the money from? So I'm tired of proving that point or coming to snap in front of the Brabos to prove a point. I, I keep getting myself into trouble. So those that know, 
No, and with time, they'll still keep seeing you once in a while with it, but I don't have to keep standing or trying to keep proving the points to them. Are we going to see more posts from you, posts of you allowing us into your personal life after this? Uh, I think I've reduced it, except I'm doing an advert or something, but for now, I think I need to keep it private. Okay. Right. All the best. We wish you all the best. We hope that this hasn't affected your children negatively in any way. Great. And we hope that you can find a way around this. And seeing that you say you've learned your lesson and you've been able to take one or two positive things from this. For people who are desperate for social media attention, what would you say to them? I would tell them a difference between trending and being relevant. You can trend. The topic has trended and it has died. But when you're relevant, you're there and you're there. Whether you build a house, whether you don't build a house. I like to use... Um, Genevieve Nas as an emphasy. We don't even know what she has, but she's relevant. If you want to talk about icons, you still call her. So whether you have or whether you don't have, it doesn't change anything. It's your personality that really matters. So okay. That's what I would tell them. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and hopefully you don't get into any further trouble on social media. <laughs> <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.